This is a NitroHouse.com online production. Hello, this is Tim from NitroHouse.com. In this video, I'm going to show you some quick and easy steps you can do to weather a ready-to-fly or ARF warbird. The order of the layers of this effect are as follows. First, a paint chip effect by dabbing aluminum color paint with fine steel wool. Second would be applying a worn paint effect by applying aluminum colored paint with an airbrush. The third layer would be the grease and grime effect with flat paint applied by an airbrush. And the final layer would be panel lines applied by using flat black and an airbrush painted over masking tape. The kit I'm using in this video is the Top Flight Hellcat pre-covered in flat Monaco. This technique is quick and easy to do and the plane really looks great on those low flybys over the flight deck. On kits like this one that have been covered with monocoat, I'll wet sand the finish to get a nice dull finish and also a nice surface for the enamel paint to stick to. I use a 400 grit sandpaper and I always move the sandpaper in the direction of the airflow over the surface. You want to keep wetting the sandpaper to wash out the debris. That way it keeps it from filling up and it's always cutting well into the surface. After wet sanding, I'll clean the entire surface with alcohol. This leaves a nice clean surface for the paint to stick to and also for the decals. On this kit, I'm applying some Cali Graphics custom decals. They make some nice decal sets in a variety of different types and also for all the different scale sizes. I will lay down some low tack painters tape, then measure and mark for the decals to line up to. When I apply these large printed decals to monocoat, I'll peel off the top masking. It's a little more difficult putting it down this way, but it helps prevent lifting the monocoat when pulling the masking tape off the applied decal. I put a little dishwashing soap in water and then rub this on the area where I'm going to apply the decal. This will allow me to slide the decal around or if I have to lift it, I'll still be able to. Carefully pull the backing off the back of the decal. These large printed decals can stretch into form if you pull too hard. I then lay the decal onto the soapy surface, carefully lining the decal up to the marks that I've made. After I get the decal in the position I want, I then use a credit card and carefully squeeze out the soapy water from underneath. I start from the center and then work my way out to the edges. This will give you a nice bubble-free finish to your decal. I then wipe off the excess soapy water and then I'll clean it with alcohol. The printed decals don't have the flat finish I'm looking for. They can't be wet sanded, so I'm going to use the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Enamel, which will dull the finish and also protect the printed surface. I will spray some out into an empty jar and then use this in my airbrush. I'll let this dry and then later go over it with a little steel wool, moving the steel wool in the same direction as the airflow. To simulate chips of paint in the monocoat, I'll use steel color enamel. The steel has a little darker color than aluminum and has a little better look for a weathered finish. To apply the paint to the monocoat, I'll put a little paint in the cap and then use a piece of steel wool to simulate the chipped paint surface. I'll use a sheet of paper to dab the steel wool just to get the excess paint off before I apply it to the monocoat. Be sure to rotate and apply different pressures. That way you get different marks and it has a more random pattern to it. I can already tell I'm applying a little too much in a couple of areas, but it's not a problem. I just turn the steel wool over and erase the areas I don't like. Even after the paint is dried, you can still go back over it with the steel wool and either reduce the amount of paint you've laid down or just remove it completely. I like to apply paint chips along the leading edge, the wingtip, trailing edge, and in between the control surfaces. I try to imagine just how much abuse these planes went through during the war and simulate that in the final product. The camera doesn't pick it up too well, but the fine hairs on the steel wool really have a nice peppered look to the finish. I also add chipped paint effects around the control surfaces and also a few random spots along all the surfaces. After finishing the chipped paint effect, I'll then thin out the steel enamel and use an airbrush to lay a thin coat over all the edges. This effect 
gives a nice weathered look of worn paint on the edges. I'll also spray areas where crewmen have walked across the wings for maintenance or even loading the guns. The flat steel enamel paint that I'm using was mixed with a little bit of flat clear and then mixed 50-50 with enamel thinner. I then go over all these areas with steel wool in the direction of the airflow. After the chipped and worn paint effects with the steel enamel, I then dirty up all the surfaces with black flat enamel mixed 50-50 with enamel thinner. With the black flat enamel, I'll do the gunpowder effects on the wings. I also go over all the edges and in between the control surfaces. It doesn't take much and I just do very light coats. I'll also make small little streaks to simulate the grease coming off the hinges for the control surfaces. And don't forget the areas where the crewmen are going to be walking across with their dirty greasy boots. I've printed out on a sheet of paper all the panel lines on the real plane. I use this as my guide for the simulated panel lines that I'll paint on. For the monocoated surface, I need a very low tack masking tape. I'll run the tape across my shirt several times to take away some of the tackiness. That way it doesn't pull up the monocoat when I lift the tape later. For panel line effects on the wing and the vertical stabilizer, I like to spray the effect towards the fuselage and in the direction the wind would flow. On the fuselage and the vertical stabilizer, I like to paint down and in the direction of the wind flow. For the panel line effect, I actually paint on the masking tape and allow the overspray to create the panel line effect. For a weekly flyer like this one, I do not measure the exact location for the panel lines. It's just a rough interpretation of the panel lines on my printed sheet. You can see here how little paint it actually takes to create this effect that I'm directing the flow of paint onto the masking tape and just allowing the overspray to hit the panel. For all of my transverse panel lines, I'm spraying in the direction of the wind flow. And for my inline panel lines, I'm spraying in the direction of the fuselage, starting at the wing tip and working towards the center. Before the paint completely cures, I'll take a small piece of steel wool and lightly scratch over the panel lines. Here I am double checking with my printed panel line sheet before I spray the paint down. Here you can see I'm spraying on the tape and allowing the overspray to hit the surface. I went a little too far, but it's easy to fix with a little steel wool. Just erase the spot that you don't want. When all the weathering is done, I'll go over the entire surface with steel wool once again, going in the direction of the airflow. This gives the surface a flat, uniform finish. I do the same process on painted surfaces like this cowling. I'll use 400 grit sandpaper and wet sand the surface first. And once again, I'll use the flat steel enamel to simulate the paint chips. And with a torn piece of fine steel wool, I'll go over the edges, giving it a peppered look. Then I'll airbrush the thin steel enamel to simulate the worn paint effect. With the flat black, I'll simulate where the oil will drip down from the prop hub as the plane sits. I'll also spray flat black along all the edges and panel lines. Places where the panel lines are molded into the fiberglass, I'll once again lay a piece of tape and spray onto the tape and using the overspray to mark the panel line. On the fuselage, I'll spray down towards the ground on the horizontal lines and in the direction of the airflow on the vertical lines. Once again, I sprayed a little too far, but that's easy to fix with a little steel wool. Just take it right off. Okay. 
And once again, when it's completed, I'll go over the entire surface with the steel wool going in the direction of the airflow. Companies like Robart make some beautiful wheels for this plane. But since this is a weekend warrior, I'm a little concerned about weight. I'll be using the kit tires, which are more than a pound lighter than the Robarts. To improve the look of these gray plastic wheels, I mask off the tires to paint them white like the real Warbird and then weather them with flat black paint to simulate the brake dust and grease. Knowing that I'm going to be weathering these wheels with flat black at the finish, I don't mask anything while I paint the white spokes or the white rim. The wheels on the real plane get extremely dirty from grease and brake dust. As I paint in between the spokes with the flat black paint, I'll allow the overspray to bleed up onto the white to simulate the grease and brake dust. Here I'm weathering the area on the rim in between the spokes where the brake dust and grease will fling out. With a little practice, you can quickly apply this technique to any ARF or ready-to-fly kit to really have a look that'll stand out at the field. So be sure to pick up some of the simple supplies that you'll need to do this and really make the plane your own. I hope this video inspires and helps your next project. Thank you for watching. This is Tim from NitroHouse.com, hoping your next day at the flying field is a good one.